seven blocks that you may be experiencing which are preventing you from moving forward in your life. Number one, letting go of your old self. This can include letting go of uh, things that have happened to you, you know, your previous traumas, negative experiences, heartbreaks, knockbacks, setbacks, anything that has caused you maybe physical and emotional pain, because it can be physical too, it can be accident related, illness related, and from there your life kind of spiraled downwards, um, a, ch a chain reaction of events. The same with, it could be something to do with a breakup, a divorce, the loss of someone, or various experiences you may have had of cruelty or malevolent, malevolent acts that may have been done against you. Often we get caught up in these, and often we form a behavioral dynamic um, in response to these, and we begin to obviously blame these events, blame these happenings, blame these things for leading us down certain paths. And in essence, or in part, it is quite true. So, you know, yes, if you have a, 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 an accident or you have um, or transgressions are committed against you and against your boundaries, um, you're broken hearted, you've been betrayed, all of these things, you may have suffered uh, an illness, I don't know, stroke, heart attack, physical disability of some sort, or an impairment on your mental functions. Yes, these things are significant happenings, uh, significant events in your life which have led you down certain paths. Where these become a block is people get so entrenched within that, it, I, wouldn't, I don't like the term victim complex, but that kind of, this happened to me, that happened to me, and this is why I am the way I am. So obviously this becomes a block, kind of within your own uh, behaviors and your, your thinking um, around certain situations and how you deal with life. It may change your mood completely. You may become more nihilistic, more cynical, depressed, sad, um, various things, uh, various emotions you may experience because of these events and you may not recover from those experience those those emotions those emotions can take hold of you and because life often you know c there's this domino effect after certain situations and you may well find that actually your feelings are quite justified now that's one thing one part of this uh, potential block like letting go of yourself now, when someone has decided that they want to move forward, they want to change, often it means letting go of the old self. And that means letting go of those happenings and events that occurred within your life that have dictated some of the path you have gone, gone down with them. So this has happened to me, this has happened to me, this has happened to me, that's why I'm here. And now I want to reinvent myself, re re recreate myself, evolve, move forward. I don't want to be com um, controlled by these things anymore. But where the scary, the really frightening proposition comes in is, okay, now you need to change. Unfortunately, the change and the result of that change is unknown. So we often drop back to what is familiar. And it's familiar to us. We know how to be within our own tragedy, trauma, um, dysfunctional dynamics with people. We know how to operate within that. We know the outcomes, they're predictable, they're familiar to us. We know how to deal with disappointment, betrayal, da 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 da, etc. etc. And so, with the desire for change comes the proposition of you're going to have to shed your old self, you're going to have to maybe cut certain relationships, certain ties. Um, and move yourself forward into the great, something referred to as like the great unknown, which some people say is a massively wonderful adventure. For other people, it's a very, very frightening proposition. If you find yourself here, this could be one of your blocks. If I let go of that, I don't know who I am. And if I don't know who I am, then I'm lost. And being lost is going to be far worse than being within a negative swamp. I know where that goes and that's familiar to me. So that's block number one. Block number two, which actually ties in with block number one, is not having a vision of where you want to go. Not having a vision, a shape, an idea of what you want to evolve into. 
And this can take some careful consideration, sometimes writing it down, journaling, thinking about it, really deciding. And people face this from, you know, uh, midlife crisis, changing careers, you've had enough of that career, you've done that for years, you want to move into something else, but you don't know what it is. You maybe have had enough of your marriage, your relationship, it's dead, it's done, there's no love left, and you, but you don't know what you're moving into. So there's all this fear there, that, or it can be this fear there, the fear of the unknown, as I said in block one. What happens in block two is, how block two helps block number one, is if you don't have a vision and a shape of where you want to go, you've got no direction. If you do, that helps you move away from block number one. So how do you form that? Well, decide what you like, what you don't like, what your boundaries are. I've, I've done this in several videos, you know, what your boundaries are, what you want to expect. Um, you know, if you were to view your life in one year's time, two years time, three years time, five years time, what would you like to see? Would you like to see more emotional stability, more financial stability, less pushed around by life and people and the actions of people and your emotions, less controlled by things? Decide what it is. What would you like to do with your free time? What would you like to do with your career? Do you want to get rid of Netflix and porn and various other things, various bad habits, smoking, drinking, eating shit food, whatever it might be, design it, design it, shape it, be flexible with it, be, allow for adaptations to take place, allow for that vision to grow and evolve naturally, but at least start with some kind of framework. And so that's block number two, without one, without having a vision, that really doesn't help block number one and makes uh, things worse. Moving on to block number three, the environment holding you back. Now this can be a really, really tricky block to navigate. And in that I mean, okay, you can gear this towards Children and adolescence is quite an obvious one. Less power and control over their lives, less financial resources, um, things being dictated to you by figures of authority. Your environment can be very dysfunctional, can be absolutely, completely abusive. Um, that makes it difficult to move from. And when I do my work with uh, children and adolescents, sometimes it's about actually helping the child or adolescent become resilient, become, be able to manage the environment that they're in because you can't change the environment. Now that's slightly different for adults, but not always. If you are in an abusive, dysfunctional relationship, toxic relationship, a difficult perhaps environment where there's not much peace, there's not much privacy, um, perhaps you're in a shelter, uh, perhaps you're out on the streets, things like that, the environment can seriously, seriously hold you back or, and make things very, very difficult for someone to be able to begin to evolve and begin to grow. And you can refer to kind of Maslow's hierarchy of needs here, you know, where you need that kind of safety, security, nourishment, and you move up the levels and you can't actually self-actualize until some of these base levels are taken care of. So the environment can be quite damaging. The environment you're in can hinder your progress or even knock it back, you know, that kind of like two steps forward, five paces back, that can happen to a lot of people. So this then moves into block number one and block number two. If your environment is holding you back and having serious detrimental consequences to your progress, to your evolution, it can be made worse by not having a vision of where you want to go just that you want out of this. That's often not enough. I want out, I want out, I want something different. You've got to define what that is, so that's block number two. Block number one is letting go of those old relationships, that old you. Actually, maybe you can change your environment. Maybe it is a good idea to leave that relationship. Maybe it is a good idea to no longer have contact with certain friends or family members or ex-partners or whatever, or move from the place that you're living in because the the distractions around you are just too invasive. So the environment needs careful consideration and can be a serious block. And again, if it, the same with um, uh, it's the same the same for adults as for children, sometimes we can't change that environment. So we then need to um, we need help or or we need to learn to become more resilient to the environment around us. Figure out ways to reduce the triggers. Um, and if we can't reduce the uh, catalysts for the trigger then reduce 
well actually this is also essential too working on how much you're triggered by things working on kind of ways to alleviate the sensations the feelings the emotions the reactions you have because you do have some control over that even if you are in an extremely toxic and negative environment um, and if you find that one very difficult to believe i suggest reading man's search for meaning by victor frankl who was an auschwitz survivor so you have power here you might not have power against the environment, but you do have power here. And if you think outside the box and utilize that power, you can eventually cope with your environment or even leave your environment. So that's block number three. Block number four can be de-empowering yourself by giving your power to other people. And a lot of us do this. A lot of people are guilty of this. Uh, and guilty is maybe a strong word. A lot of people do do this. What does it actually mean, giving your power over? So the reliance on someone else to make things better for you or the reliance on someone changing their ways, their behavior in order to accommodate you. And this can happen within romantic relationships, family relationships, friendship circles, and also work environment, et cetera, et cetera. And you, there's this kind of like, I'm relying on them to provide me with work, happiness, emotional stability, financial stability, and all of those kind of things. So therefore, what you've done is you've depowered yourself. You are unable to self-soothe, self-regulate, manage your own finances, get your own finances, um, support yourself, and you are unable to f lead a fulfilling life without someone intervening, someone giving you something. That's quite a depowering position to be in. The other side to that is constantly asking for help, constantly um, questioning yourself. And I think a lot of us have done this, especially in stressful times, you know, you start messaging everybody. This has happened to me, oh my God, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? You know, oh, should I do this? Should I do that? Should I do that? And sometimes we actually even message people who's who we know are going to give us a certain answer that we want to hear. This is quite depowering. So, and there are ways, I'll do another video on how to kind of like re-empower yourself, but there are ways to take that power back. You can reflect on where you have made decisions for yourself, where you have done things for yourself that have made you, um, give left you with a feeling of fulfillment. You have accomplished things. You have made uh, you have made changes, and there's been progress in those changes. It's really, really worth acknowledging those and celebrating those achievements, even if you feel a little bit silly, like they're a bit small. Or what's worth what's the point in celebrating it? If you're somebody who can't make a decision for themselves, and you rely on everybody else's advice, and then you're even more confused because there's too many voices, and you manage to make a decision for yourself at some point randomly because you just had to on the spot. Acknowledge it, celebrate it. There are other things you can do to prevent, uh, to bring your power back, but like I said, do those in another video. Block number five, persistence, consistency, motivation. A lot of us struggle with this. A lot of us try things for a day or two days or a week and it doesn't work. And you're going, ah, that was a rubbish idea. Didn't work. I tried, I don't know whatever it might be. I tried going to a therapist, I saw them twice, you know, or I, or I, I, I tried not having a drink and it lasted about three days, I, just, I had a headache. And, um, or I tried starting a new business, but within a month, um, you know, it just got too much. And so at some point, if you really, really want to make these changes, you have to make some changes in yourself, these external changes. You may need to make some external, internal changes in yourself persistence at what you're trying to pursue. Keep going, even if you meet obstacles, work around the obstacles, think around the obstacles, tackle it, accept there's an obstacle. Now I've got to think around this one. Consistency, um, if you are inconsistent, you'll get inconsistent results. And, and I'm kind of moving this over to just sort of changing, you know, career, relationship, dynamics, things like that. But also within yourself, you need to change relationship with yourself. So being consistent does actually bring results and break it down. You know, there's so much research and study out there on this. You know, if you practice for 20 minutes a day at something, I saw this one recently, I can't remember who said it, but it's 20 minutes a day at something. 
Within a year, you've done 100 hours of practice. If, if you want to get fit or you want to lose weight, for instance, you know, go at it in small increments. Move, your, you know, move yourself forward slowly, you know. So maybe you can't do a marathon, but maybe you can walk a mile. Maybe you can walk two miles the following week. Just keep going at it. Maybe you can build it up to a run. Maybe you, you can up your weights, your cardio, the time you spend on it. Maybe when you first start yoga or Pilates, you're not that flexible. Well, you're not supposed to be because you're learning how to be. You're developing yourself. So, but persistence and consistency and motivation um, are key factors. And if you struggle with those, it's going to be a block. So this move takes me forward as well. In order to combat this block, we need to look at the next block, which is block number six, which is limiting beliefs, self-concept, self-belief, imposter syndrome, I don't know enough, I'm too self-conscious, I'm embarrassed, I feel like a fraud, I'm no good at this, um, I'm comparing myself to other people, which is deadly. Um, <clears throat> these limiting beliefs can be a block, or will be a block, and if you can manage to work around these limiting beliefs, you can also help block number five. So persistence in persistency, persistence and consistency and motivation kind of ties in with limiting beliefs. And if you can, they overlap. And if you can manage to work with both, one will influence the other. So, so consciously grab hold of those limiting beliefs. Okay, so I don't understand how, for instance, you know, I want to build my own business. I don't understand how marketing works. Well, then learn. You know, instead of reframe the question, instead of I don't know how, I'm okay, I've recognized there's an issue. I need to learn. So I'm going to set aside some time and I'm going to watch some YouTube videos or whatever on how to do this. I'm going to ask some friends how they do it. I'm going to learn how to use a computer, make a social, make a Facebook page, make whatever it, it needs to be. I don't, um, and so grab those limiting beliefs. I don't know enough. Um, unless I have a master's degree, I don't know enough. Unless I've done 20 years in this, I don't know enough. Um, and what you do is you, you, you actually, those limiting beliefs, no one's going to like me, no one's going to this, I, I can't talk properly, um, etc, etc. If you maintain those limiting beliefs, they're just going to hold you back. One way of dispelling those limiting beliefs, again, is looking at what you can achieve, have achieved. And if you feel still that you have a limiting belief, well, I haven't achieved anything, well, then look at what you need to achieve and what resources you have um, available to you in order to move forward. But try and catch those limiting beliefs. Check them against reality. So you may be standing there and you may be feeling like a complete fraud talking to people at some kind of business conference or meeting or explaining something to the new employee or, or whatever it is and thinking, I have no idea what I'm talking about. Get rid of it. You do know what you're talking about. You do have some experience. You do have something to share. Um, and if you make a mistake, the best thing you can do with making a mistake, if you stand there and you make an idiot of yourself or what or you think you have or you make a mistake or you fluff your words up, own it. I'm very sorry. I completely lost my tra train of thought. Let me, re let me reset. Uh, right, let me start this one again. What you do is you get rid of that, those thoughts, that voice in your head going, you're a fool, you're a fool, everybody's looking at you, you're a fool, you don't know what you're doing, or whatever that voice might be for you in your head. So get rid of those limiting beliefs, and you can do that, like I said, by looking at some of your in uh, achievements, even if they're minute and incremental. I think it was Jordan Peterson who said, keep moving forward, even if you're stumbling and falling, you're still stumbling and falling forward. So keep doing it. And if you fall backwards, then pick yourself up because that's a movement forward. So, and recognize it. It's really, really important and help dispel some of these myths. And also you can kind of analyze these myths and kind of go, where does that come from? Where does that voice come from? Who told me I was shit at this? Who told me, uh, who told me I was not very good at this? Who told me that, um, I didn't like such and such. Oh yeah, it was my, uh, you know, my parent or my my siblings or my ex-partner who was always saying, you're this and you're that and you're no good at whatever. You know, figure out the origins of where some of that 
those um, limiting self-beliefs may come from. Final block, block number seven, sacrifice. You have to make sacrifices. And if you're not willing to make sacrifices in order to make a change, then maybe you don't actually really want that change. Now that's quite a hard truth to hear for some people. And I think all of us have faced that at some point in our lives, or most of us have faced it. You're gonna to have to make sacrifices if you want to push past inertia, if you want to push past limiting beliefs, if you want to push past your environment, if you want to push past letting go of your old self, and if you want to push past not having a vision, you are going to have to do some work. And if you're going to do some work and make some changes, that takes some sacrifice. You might have to sacrifice certain relationships. You might have to sacrifice certain habits. You might have to sacrifice not feeling stupid. Get rid of that one. No, but you might have to sacrifice some time to learn new behaviors, gain new knowledge, gain new information. Um, you may have to sacrifice Netflix. You may have to sacrifice porn, going out, partying all the time because that completely destroys your weekend. And then you find that you're not in the mood to make any changes or do some work on that side hustle or whatever it is that you want to push your life forward. So sacrifice can be a bit of a block. Sacrificing very, very pleasurable things Try to reframe it in terms of delayed gratification. You know what, if I put work in today, I'm gonna to benefit from it in tomorrow, you know, tomorrow as in the future. And then I'll be in a space where I can enjoy those things in a more wholesome way. Um, I can enjoy them without panicking about, oh, I've got to go work Monday morning, or I don't know how to pay for the restaurant, or I don't know how to do this, or I've got to see this person again, or, Often these pursuits we have can be escapism, especially if you're in a negative environment, you have limiting self-beliefs, um, you don't know what your potential is, you don't know what you want to change into. If you have all of that, we can escape into more immediate, easily gained gratification. So going out, socializing, sitting at home, just you know, chilling out in front of Netflix completely distracting ourselves, scrolling endlessly, doom scrolling, doing whatever, watching actually other people get on with stuff can actually be quite debilitating as well. So change it. Accept that if you really want this, you're gonna to have to make some sacrifices. And like I say, there can be some really, really difficult ones. It can be relationships, it can be family members, it can be friendships that you've had for a long time. You know what, this doesn't work for me anymore. It's actually holding me back. And, and don't do the you think, you're holding me back. No, I, you know, they're in your world. You've allowed them that space in your head, you know. So therefore you can evict them as well. So I hope that all helps. They are seven blocks which can prevent you from evolving, making changes that um, you desire. Once again, please like and subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. It really, really does help the channel. And I look forward to seeing you again. And in the meantime, until we meet, please take very good care of yourselves. Adios.